Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to listen to Ariana Sacco. She is conducting her postdoctoral research uh, into e Egyptian pottery using network analysis. And she's going to tell us how um, she's applying digital methods into her work. If you like the video, let's give us a little thumbs up and subscribe. Let's go. Hi Ariana. Hello. Hello Leticia. Hey, thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here with you. Me too. So we have a very unusual topic. Uh, you're going to talk about the relations between the sites in Egypt based on material culture and network analysis. What can you tell us about it? <laughs> okay. Uh, um, let's say that the um, period that I'm studying um, is a period um, which is included more or less between the 1850 and 1550 BC. Um, so it's the later part of the Middle Kingdom, what is now the Middle Kingdom, and then the Second Intermediate Period. Um, now, uh, of course, especially in the Second Intermediate Period, we have um, a country that is politically divided, and where we can also see some regional differentiation in the material culture, uh, which are actually really visible in the late Middle Kingdom. And um, so we have... Um, Po political changes going on, but we don't have um, many texts, we don't have many written sources to, to know more. Um, so it's a period that is analyzed mostly through the material culture, or that is uh, analyzed a lot also through the material culture. And um, so what I decided to do uh, to contribute um, in um, learning more about what was going on in this period between the different communities, between the different areas in Egypt, um, is applying the network analysis to the material culture. Um, and so looking at what types of objects the different sites had in common um, or not, because that is also a factor. So how um, quantit quantitatively and statistically how different uh, or how similar the, um, the types of objects that they used were. Uh, because that can tell if they could be, uh, or could be in a um, closer relationship, so probably be part of the same um, pol political area or having closer contacts compared to, to other areas. And so network analysis is, um, a methodology which was actually born in the social sciences um, so it's very um, is based on the study of how um, it started on studying how humans interact persons interact based on for example events they they attend together um, or for example classes that they attend together and, and then has been applied um, more and more in different fields. So it's very used, for example, in biology, um, in neurology to study how the neurons interact, for example, molecules interact, so in chemistry. Um, it's been used in, um, in um, planning the public transport, so in, in all sorts of different things, in, uh, to study how the different internet sites connect, so the internet traffic. So to all sorts of these different things. And mostly since uh, around 20 years, it's been applied also in archaeology, uh, but not yet in Egyptian archaeology. So it's been applied, for example, to Greek archaeology, uh, Roman archaeology, uh, Vikings in, um, in the US, but not yet in Egypt. In Egypt, it's mostly been applied to historical documents of other um, eras than the one that I'm studying. And so I've decided to use it for, for the period that I'm, I'm dealing with, to, to know more about that. And so it's a method that is, um, allows to uh, systematically um, study the relationships between elements, between um, elements in, in the same group or even um, between two groups. And so you can visualize that then in a graph, and you can um, analyze the role of each entity in this graph, in this network, 
uh, through also mathematical formulas. So there's also math mathematics involved in it. And of course, this is just a tool because then it needs to be uh, interpreted. So it's something that can uh, help uh, us. So for the use of this mathematics, of uh, uh, graph theory, there's also lots of graph theory involved. And it's, it's done through digital tools, so through specialized softwares, and offers our tools to then give an interpretation of the data that we have. Um, and so first I have started doing that with my uh, PhD and um, I've applied it, um, so it's still the same period that I'm talking about, um, but I applied it to uh, small finds, so to the scarabs, um, to uh, stone vessels, um, to beads and to metal weapons of, of that period. Uh, as well as two types of pottery, which are very peculiar because they are um, first of a uh, foreign origin. So one is from Cyprus and the other one is from um, the Levant, so from Syria, Palestine. Um, and then at first they get import, they are imported into Egypt and, and then they are also locally imitated. So they are assimilated to Egyptian culture and imitated, of course, with some changes. Um, and so I've, I've done that from PhD. And now for uh, the postdoc, uh, I still analyzing that, but applying it to pottery because uh, pottery is um, is different material than the uh, the objects that I've studied so far. And I mean, it's more um, commonly found and has um, helped a lot with the dating score. For example, with, with the beads, you can, you see small differences between the different uh, eras, but there's not really lots of dating. It's not, it can't help with dating like the pottery. And so studying pottery um, helps uh, having a more also fine tuned research from the chronological point of view. And it's really loads of material. So it can add more depth to, to what I've already done. Could it help um, uh, analyze the relationships between people? Oh yeah, sure, if you have enough. Yeah, yeah, of course, if you have enough data, yes. Yeah, um, but I mean, um, what, it, what is also very used today, and I haven't gone into depth into, depth into that yet, is also what is called agent-based modeling, um, which is um, still based on uh, this idea of relationship and exchange, but there you have um, actor. Um, so you really are based on agent, on actors, and so you calculate what could have happened based on the decisions that you could have made. So you give parameters based on what you already know from, from the data, from the finds, and then you can calculate different outcomes um, about what they would have done. Um, or there is also something called um, the uh, actor network analysis. So there's also based on, on the role of, yeah, really single people. So it is possible to do if you, if you have uh, uh, enough data. Because um, for example, when um, with the research that I'm doing, um, so I basically um, connect to sites in the diagram. Also, this doesn't mean that I had um, direct relationship, but they have a link, a connection, if they have a type of object in common. But I cannot say if the object went from one side to the other, so I cannot say what was the origin. I can also do a only do a correlation, so that they were, they had this thing together. But I cannot go from one to the other, I cannot place the origin of that. But if you have that type of material that allows you to know, okay, this, this thing originated here, then yeah, you, you can definitely also go into more deep analysis. It always depends on the kind of data that you have. Um, and that's why network analysis has also been applied a lot to historical characters um, and based on documents. Uh, because then from what, from what you read on the documents, you can establish the relationship between the different persons, for example. 
um, with the object is, um, is more tricky because unless you know the origins of the material, um, for example, there has been a study done on the obsidian in the, in the US. Um, and so they knew the origin of the different types of obsidian. And so they were studying the relationship between the different sites based on, um, you know, where the, that particular type of obsidian originated from the particular place was found. So in this case, you, you can do that. But um, unless you have that, uh, with the object is more difficult. Um, but also the problem that I'm um, dealing with is that uh, many uh, publications with uh, where I so take the data from, um, they were made like a century ago. So, so yeah. <laughs> so the data that they, um, that they the way that they publish, of course, is different than what we do today. And the way that they uh, classify the objects, the, I mean, the way they looked at objects, at the objects was different. So um, there are data missing, of course, but it's always the case. Um, I mean, it, it's always, it, when, when you study, it's always a sample. You never have the entire thing. And so th this is one problem, there are data missing. Um, the other is that, so you need to do a bit of detective work then to understand what they meant by what they were saying. It really um, retrieve the data from pictures, from drawings, uh, you know, from, from the text. You even, you need, really need to read between the lines to, to get what they, what they had in their hands. Because I mean, that's also the problem with the archeology span that is a destructive thing. So they went there, they excavated, they found the objects. I wasn't there, or we weren't there. Yeah. So yeah, we hadn't actually seen what they saw. And there are um, people nowadays, there are people trying to reconstruct, but it's really a lot of work and the data are just not available <laughs> to people like me, for example. <laughs> And, but so there is some work that is being done, uh, but it's still in, in early stage. So, you know, it's really up to whoever is doing the research to then Obviously. retrieve what could have been. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, okay. and to make an hypothesis. Is there so, a specific software? Yeah, there are specific softwares. Yeah, that, that you can use. And um, there are quite a few that are actually open source. So you, you can have them for free. Uh, a couple of them, you you have to pay a subscription. Um, for example, the one that I use is called Aura, and it has a free version. And so that's what I'm using, and it helps me uh, making the graphs and um, so calculating the formulas. But um, what I'm also doing is um, learning Python. So I'm I'm getting deeper in my knowledge of Python, of coding in Python, uh, because it's also lots of cool libraries and stuff that you can do to then get the network analysis. So the same thing that you do with the software, you can uh, code and program Python to, to do that for you. And so you can input the formulas and find, so fine tune even the mathematical aspect. The point is that, so it's all, uh, we are talking about a sampling and also the way that you catalog and the choice that you make um, are important. Because when, when uh, people, th oh, often when people talk about digital methods, in, so in, in humanities, in, 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 or in archaeology, in digitology, it always seems like this abracadabra, you know, that you basically, <laughs> you, you just put everything in a black box and do the black box do the work for you. But, but, <laughs> so there are lots of choices that you, need to do before. So there is already a sort of um, interpretation, if you want to call it, of the data, because that you have to decide what is important for the classification, how to classify. Um, because for example, now for the, um, for the vessels that I'm studying, I'm, class I'm um, so considering to make my typology, so to, to make the typology, then, then I will input in the program. Um, I'm considering uh, so the dimensions, um, the shape, the fabric, and also how the rim was and, and the body 
and uh, and the base so that there are all these um elements uh that i'm uh, considering uh and that is for example different from what i did with my phd because there for example to study the beads um i considered only the shape and the material and so that it was mostly based on it but now with the pottery i'm going more um in in depth so there are this um the typology can be different based on what you consider and this also gives you different um connection between the sides so and and then first you need to do then your database with the elements that you consider important based on on your um on your question uh and then so you need to do what is called the matrix and and so is this um is usually for example we may say csv file where you um see each site how many types of uh, of objects as in common um for example with the with the stone vessels it, it if you see that this like big uh, the cell connecting because you need them to reason in 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 cells in the csv file and so if you see that the cell with abidus and um uh, teledaba as a tree that means that they have three types of some vessels in common and so you do this and and then you import that in the program and and then the program will give you the graph and and then you decide which formulas you want to calculate because there are a lot so there's also other choices that you need to to make the program just basically is a tool that does what you tell tell it to do and then, then the graph is just a small part of it basically all right ariana thank you so much for uh presenting all this and your uh, research topic it was fascinating i wish you have a good one and a nice weekend Thank you, I wish you all the best, so thank you so much for having me here, it was really a pleasure meeting you, it was really a pleasure being here. Yeah, for me too. Thank you, thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.